Hello and welcome to Serena Speaks and in this video I'm going to go over some of my last minute hints and tips to get through the next few weeks before in the run up to the exam. So firstly try not to panic. I know that's easier said but hold on, chill. Remember it's not how much time you have, it's how you utilise that time and how you're going to squeeze out the hours in the day to make the most of it. So how can you go about doing that? Well, first and foremost, have a timetable set out in place. So you need to prioritise which areas you feel confident in and comfortable in and which areas you know need a bit of work on. So the way that I organised my timetable was whilst I was still working, um, before I would go to work, sometimes I'd end up getting to work about 20 minutes early. Um, so before I'd go to work or in my breaks, whenever I could, when there was a quiet period, which was very rare, but when there was a quiet period, I would bring out my notes and go through them. That meant that when I got home in the evenings, I could just do question after question after question. And areas that I was still getting wrong or questions that I was still not understanding properly, I would leave that until a time like over the weekend when I would have time to go through that properly and, and make sure that I could master that particular topic. So ways that I would do that is, for example, creating posters um, and I'd stick posters anywhere and everywhere where I could think of. And for example, I'd stick it on my wardrobe door so that whenever I would go to my wardrobe to open the door, I would have that poster staring at me and I would make myself go through it before opening the door. And at least that way it sort of reiterated that information and it then made it stick into my head so that when I would do questions later on on that particular topic, I would think, oh yeah, I remember this from my poster. So that's that's how that helped me. What I also found beneficial was actually sitting in front of a mirror and reciting my notes to myself. It's kind of where the idea for Serene Speaks came about. But that I found really helpful as well because I would remember telling myself that information. So again, when I would be given a question about something, I would remind myself, oh yeah, I remember, I remember in my notes because I was talking about that and that's how, that's how my brain works. And hopefully that these little hints and tips can help you as well. So reading your notes out loud, making posters or post-it notes, whatever it may be, sticking them around in areas to, re, to reiterate that information back to you. What I also think is quite useful is having the GPHC syllabus in front of you and being able to tick off the topics as you're going through them. Yes, it's quite tedious. Yes, it's quite a chunky syllabus, but at least then you know that you've gone through each section so that if you are presented with a question in the exam on any of those sections, you can think to yourself, yes, I have gone through this. I do know this. And equally, if there's areas where you're maybe a bit stuck on or you don't really know about or you know you haven't gone through, make that priority to then go through it. And as I've said before, don't forget about those low weighted topics because, yeah, they may only ask one or two questions on them, but those one or two questions can make a big difference. So definitely go through that as well. What I found really useful was actually budding up with other people. Um, I don't like revising on my own. I like being able to, as you can imagine, talk it out and um, revise with other people. And especially if you have someone who's in a hospital setting and you're in a community setting, or you have someone who's in a community setting and you're in a hospital setting, you can learn a lot from each other. For example, someone who's in a hospital setting will know a lot more about aseptic techniques, medicines information, drug charts, whereas someone in a community setting might know more about over-the-counter preparations. So together you can combine each other's knowledge and help each other out in that way. And what I can't stress out enough is don't compare yourself to other people, especially don't compare a topic that you're weak in with someone else who's strong in that topic. Your weakness and someone else's strength is the worst thing to compare. For me, that was calculations and I still don't like calculations. I've made no secret about that. But I would end up comparing myself to other people and think, why is it that I can't understand it when someone else can understand it? But actually, again, buddy up. If you know someone who's really good in it, ask them for help. There's no harm in asking. That's what we're all here for. Pharmacy is such a small world. Everyone knows everyone by the end of it. So help each other out in that way. 
And the same way, way, the same way, if you find that actually someone else is weak on something, but you're strong on something, help them out. At least that way, it's re by budding up with each other, by helping each other out, it's reaffirming your own knowledge as well as learning something new. So definitely help each other in that way. And what I would say is you have so many resources at your fingertips. You have the BNF, the MEP, you have books out there, websites out there, only use the reputable ones. So, for example, if you're tired of reading the same over-the-counter book, you look at the NHS website, type in any condition, outcomes, symptoms, the treatment options, and you might find it a better way of learning, or at least it might add to the notes that you already have. And the same way you've got your NICE guidelines, if you want to know more about the standards, your standards of conduct, ethics and performance, all the information, all the resources are available on GPHC website. So don't just think to yourself, it's only the MEP or it's only the BNF that you have to use. There are so, so, so many resources that you can use. And a really big point to make is past papers. Do as many questions as you can. Do question after question after question after question. Because you might end up finding that actually questions repeat themselves. And so, again, it's just reaffirming that knowledge to yourself. And if you're still getting questions wrong, don't panic. It's OK to get things wrong. You remember and you learn more from what you get wrong than you do from what you get right. And again, you might be faced with a question whilst you're practicing. You may get it wrong. That same question might come up in the exam and you'll think to yourself, oh, yeah, I remember getting that question wrong last time because this was the answer. Oh, yeah, I know what the answer is this time. And then you'll get it right in the exam. It's OK to get things wrong so long as you do learn from it. Now, I do get asked a lot which calculation resources and books I recommend, so I'll include them in the description book. Um, particularly, I found when actually trying to, uh, to practice questions, the um, pharmacy registration assessment um, book, questions book, and the pharmaceutical and the practical pharmaceutical calculations book, they were the best ones for actually practicing questions. I found that the other two books were really good for trying to understand the not understand the background to the question. And yes, with some of the books, they're still in the old style format. So when calculations was multiple choice, but don't let that put you off. You'll still need to know the methods, the, the formulas and whatnot for answering those questions. So don't be put off by doing MCQ calculations questions, even though that's not what it is going to be in the exam. And if you are still at work, and you haven't taken time off yet then I know I've banged on about it in so many videos, but actively revise at work. It is truly the best way to utilise your time and to revise and learn. So, for example, if someone hands you a prescription, screen that prescription. If it's a dental prescription, check, is this medication that's on here accepted in the dental formulary? If it's a control drug, then are the extra legalities that go along with prescriptions on a control drug, is that valid on here? Is it still within the 28 days? Is the quantity written in words and figures? Once you're happy that the prescription is legally valid, then check on there. Is it clinically valid? Are there any particular medicines on there that may interact with each other? Once you've done that and you go to process the prescription, check on the patient's PMR. Is this a new medicine? Is this medicine going to interact with anything that's on their PMR? And then once you're happy and you've processed it and you start printing out the dispensing labels, check if any pop-up messages come up. Drug X and drug Y might interact because of this outcome, or this might happen in, with drug Z and drug M, whatever it may be. But don't just skip over those pop-ups. Make sure to learn them. Make sure to understand. Why is that the case? Why is it if benzoflumathiazide and furosemide are being together, that's going to cause hypokalemia? Why is that? Once you've then checked your labels, Check, and once you've just printed your labels even, check on the labels. Are there any extra counselling points on there? Does this medicine need to be taken before or after food? Is it going to colour the patient's urine? And then at least when then you give the medicine out to the patient, you can give them those extra counselling and warning points. So see, through just the process of dispensing a medication and having a prescription taken in, you can revise and remind yourself and reiterate your learning through each step of that process so definitely actively revise at work if you do have an over-the-counter 
counter, if you do have a healthcare counter even, then go on there. Try and make yourself familiar of what products you have available to you. How would the advice differ if someone came in with a chesty cough compared to a dry cough? Um, if a, pa a parent comes in and their child has head lice, do you know which products you could give? What if they're asthmatic? Which, product, which products could you not give? It's little things like that that you can do throughout your day that will help you to actively learn. And it makes your vision so, so much more productive and it utilises your time so much better. And if there are areas where you don't know the answer to it, that's fine. Make a note of it. When you go home, look it up. That's how we all learn. Even when you're practising as a qualified pharmacist, there will be instances that come up that you wouldn't have been aware of. That's your opportunity to do your CPD. So pharmacy is one of those professions where you're continually, continually learning throughout. So actively revising at work, I say it again and again and again and again, but do do it because it is the best way to learn. So those are some of my main top tips. And what I would also add is make sure to take regular breaks. I remember when I'd be doing the exam, I'd feel guilty for taking the breaks because I think to myself, oh, like I should be spending this time revising rather than having this break. But actually you need that mental chill out time. So don't feel guilty for having those breaks. Do things that relax your mind. Watch some TV, go out for a walk, play some football, whatever it may be. Do things that just relax you out because at least that way it will re-energise you to start up again. You can't keep influxing your brain with information, information, information because you will wear yourself out. So do take those breaks, do eat properly, drink lots of water. I'm sure you've heard it again and again, but it is really important to do all those things. Have enough sleep as well. Even if you're someone who works better at night time than you do in the day, then get those eight hours of sleep during the day so that you can work during the night. Whatever works best for you, but do look after yourself as well. If you're burnt out, you won't be getting the most out of yourself. So do just relax, chill, take it easy go with the flow, go with the rhythm. And then once you've done that, you'll feel energised, you'll be ready to go again. I can't stress it out enough, but do as many questions as you can, whether it be in the old style format or the new style format, the types of questions they will ask will still be very, very similar. So do as many questions, get yourself familiar with the types and styles of questions that they can ask and just do and rinse out as many as you can. So I hope those top tips can help you and just remember and keep reminding yourself of how far you have come and how how much motivation and dedication and perseverance you need to overcome the next few weeks, overcome the next few days so that you can sit the exam, smash it out and then completely relax and know that you've done everything that you can. I think if you can safely say to yourself, you have done all that you can, that is success in itself. So the very best of luck for the next few weeks. And I hope that this video did help you out. And if it did, why not give us a like, share, subscribe, join me on Twitter, um, join me on Facebook. And until next time, good luck with your vision and happy revising.